farmer here. Oh dear. Yeah, but I'm not sure if he wants to get into a debate. Oh no, he's okay. No, hello, how are you, my friend? What do you farm? What animals do you farm? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming, my okay. friend. Thank you. I, was, I thought you were asleep then for a second. I was like, is, that, is he asleep? Look, he must not be interested. <laughs> how you going, my friend? Do you have a question? No, no, it's just that it's a, everybody farm. I work from vegetables. Okay. The biggest problem is supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And certainly, if you, you know, farmers will farm the population. Exactly. If everybody's vegan, we'll produce what they're vegan. Exactly so right. The, the difficulty about it is, is you have to produce what the, the industry Exactly, the consumers want. The consumers want. Mm -hmm. And then there's organics in it. And how we work the organics to produce good food. And organics need livestock. But it's how we do that. Mm -hmm. you know, I certainly am really interested to hear the ideas, your ideas. That's why, as a farmer, mm. you have to be open minded. Yeah. You know, yeah. We all, there's a lot of us are open minded. Right? Yeah. We're not one to say this is wrong, that's wrong. We like to hear what people yeah. say. And I totally understand that. That's why. My tiff isn't with farmers. Like, I don't hate farmers. And, like, I don't know why the media are trying to sort of perpetuate this vegans hate farmers propaganda because it's just simply not true I understand supply and demand okay farmers are producing what the consumers want okay that's that's the, that's the bottom line now I talk to consumers and say hey if you buy plant-based products farmers are gonna supply plant-based alternatives okay they're gonna get into you know plant farming uh, uh, plant proteins and this is gonna happen now do I have uh, have I written out a sketch on how to um, transfer um, your animal farm into a plant farm. No, I haven't, okay? But I'm sure that that's something the vegan society will get behind and, and ha help farmers, uh, you know, transform their farm uh, to, to grow plants. Because that's where, it's, that's where the industries are heading. Obviously, um, if you're farming animals, you know where those animals go and the public are gonna be like, after a while, they're gonna see that. They're gonna be like, well, we don't want to contribute to these animals being killed anymore. We don't want to eat animals anymore. We don't want to eat things that come out of animals anymore because the fate of all animals in that industry is a knife across the throat. Whether they're being used for their wool, whether they're being used for their eggs, whether they're being used for their milk, they all get a knife across their throat. And the animals aren't just aren't recognised in this. Their rights aren't being recognised. Now, this isn't the farmer's fault. They're, br they're brought up into farming communities. Okay, this is, they're trying to make a living. Consumers are giving them money and saying, hey, we want, we want this product. But um, we have to look at this from the victim's perspective. Okay, because the farmers, they're a victim of conditioning, okay, of society who want a certain product. But the real victim are the ones who are going through that slaughterhouse door and coming out chopped up into pieces. Okay, and this is, um, this is perspective. But sooner or later, yeah, that society are going to say, okay, we don't want to exploit and kill animals anymore. Can you grow this amazing plant food for us? And I'm sure there's going to be a, a great blueprint for you guys to follow. The vegan society are working on uh, doing workshops for farmers on how to, uh, you know, uh, change from growing animals to growing plants. So, what do you think about that? Different climates in different parts of the world, and we have to. It's not just like I've been Australian, Australian, right? Mm. And it's quite, you know, it's quite diverse. It's not going to change overnight. No. It's going to be a long, long time. Yeah, and we we understand that too. That not everyone's going to go vegan overnight. Uh, that's not realistic. Some people do think that though, and they do use that as an argument. What are you going to do with all the animals when everyone goes vegan? There's going to be animals everywhere. No, they're slowly going to change industries. They're slowly going to produce. Be, they're going to be breeding less into existence. The reason there's so many animals is because farmers are breeding them into existence to keep up with the demand. Okay, and when we change over and stop, you know, asking them to breed more animals into existence, there's going to be less animals, and it's going to be. It's going to be something that's going to have to happen. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen. All I know is I, w I don't want animals to go to slaughterhouses anymore. I don't want animals to be used for their bodies against their will. They don't have a choice in that. Okay? And I don't want farmers out of a job. Okay? Don't want families out of work. That's not what we want. We want all, all of us to work together. Now, media want to paint a picture. And I really learned that this week. They take things out of context. Oh, 
Uh, you know, th that's just what they do. Uh, my workshops are online. How I ask people to advocate is in a respectful manner. I don't, I don't advocate for people to, to yell stuff at farmers, to send death threats. And anyone that does do that, I condemn. And I condemn uh, death threats publicly. But if, if these dead death threats actually do exist, which I haven't seen any evidence for, at the moment it's just an assertion, someone's made a claim, okay? But if, if I do find someone in the movement doing that, then I publicly condemn them, because that's not how we make change. It's through polite dialogue, discussion, okay? Throwing around our ideas and education. That's how we change. So farmers are not the enemy. The enemy is the act of exploiting and killing animals, okay? And farmers have been taught this, okay? We've all been taught this. I was taught that eating animals is okay. I was a part of it, I was a consumer. I was paying for it to happen. I was part of the same system. Okay, so that's why I'm not coming from a place of I'm better than anyone, you know? <laughs> used to eat animals three times a day just like everyone else. So I understand all of that. But um, bottom line is the real victims do not have a voice and we need to speak up for them. So if we, we, we shouldn't be waiting for us to get our, our act together to stop consuming and exploiting animals. Uh, that needs to happen as soon as possible. What he's saying is not all farmland is suitable for certain crops. You know, so some of them are in a bit of a, a, a harder place. So there's going to be dif difficulties for some farmers. They can't grow certain plant foods on their land. Some land is only suitable for what they're currently doing. So there's going to be some issues with it. The thing is, they've got time. Okay, this isn't going to happen bang overnight. You have time to get your, st your stuff together and work out what's going to happen because it's going to be a gradual change. But, you know, Rarely does society stay the, the same, you know, that society usually catches up and once people see what goes on inside them places, I um, mean, you take me to the most humane slaughterhouse on earth. Take me there. Let me bring a camera in there and show the public and, and we'll see if they think that that's humane. It's not humane to take an animal's life against their will because if you, you put your pet dogs in, those, in that same situation, you'd freak out. You would freak out. Um, anyone else got questions? Thank you.